I am fortunate to be on the Judiciary Committee in the United States Congress. And the chairman of the Judiciary Committee is John Conyers, and I invited him here today. There is no better person to speak to us to wrap up maybe what we've heard than John Conyers. He is from Michigan, so uh, our, our uh, Baldwin expert, Dr. Zaboraska, is from the University of Michigan. They had a tough time with the Spartans, but they still have only lost once this year. Uh, and he is as expert of, uh, on the history of music and jazz as anybody that I know. Um, so knowing jazz, knowing civil rights, uh, knowing America, and I believe knowing James Baldwin, I think some of his observations would be most uh, apropos. And I give you uh, one of the heroes of the uh, American uh, 20, 20th century and the 21st century, a civil rights leader, the employer of Rosa Parks, a great American, and my chairman, John Conyers. We had uh, three events on my schedule tonight. And of course, this was the easiest one and the most potentially enjoyable one to, to go to. And so we did. And I did with this lovely lady uh, who has joined Chairman Cohen, the Judiciary Committee. And this is her very first day on the job. And now it's your very first night on the job as well. Let, let us welcome Michelle Murrell. And uh, the reason I'm here, besides the invitation from my good friend, who is a, a very unusual person from the South who brings together uh, everything we're trying to accomplish in the 21st century out of his own experience. Uh, Steve Cohen does, who has worked now with Harry Belafonte. Uh, and uh, he has a music background of his own. But I'm here because of the simple recognition that everything is everything. You see, we're all connected whether we know it or not, or whether you want to be or not. And tonight's gathering with Dr. Jackson and this wonderful woman whose intellectual love affair with Baldwin is so clear uh, and so helpful. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to suggest that I may be the only one here that knew James Baldwin, who worked with James Baldwin. or with Martin Luther King, for that matter. And so what I see in this evening at Georgetown University is a chance for us to expand our relationships uh, in a totally enjoyable way. And the fact that Howard University and Georgetown could come together and that, that these subjects that at once seem disparate, unconnected, then you begin to see a little strand of connection is explained to you. So it's the future I'm concerned about, not the past. How fast can we build on this bold undertaking of an evening here tonight? Two countries, 
two talents. What? Where do we go from here? Well, if if one is not careful, it'll be just a great night. We'll all remember this. Fabulous. Wow. But I think there's enough understanding about a lot of things. You know, culture is so funny. Culture is normally what what you do when you're not working for a living. <laughs> it's what's what's left over. I mean, let's let's talk some jazz. Let's uh, do uh, architecture. Let's look at paintings. Let's dance. Let's enjoy. But yet that plays a great, that's very important. And uh, there are some people that do culture full time. That's it. And, and that's what tonight illustrates with our two great presenters. So as I leave here, the question is, uh, was this just a, a great night? Or, or do the leaders of these two great intellectual centers see somewhere else it can go? Something more that can be done, that, that we can reach out even further, maybe to people less sympathetic to the natural bonds that have been evoked here tonight. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to work toward. Uh, there is a world to be won. Uh, Turkey plays a uh, ever-increasing role in this. Little known hardly understood, mostly spoken of, well, but the great superpowers. You know, there are a lot of little turkeys in the world, but the little turkeys in the world as what they did for Baldwin can become the, the people who can see beyond the, the words, the books, the novels, the imagination, the creativity, and see us doing something for six and a half billion people, most of whom are living lives of utter desperation. This is the great side. This is the fun side. And now, as we see in our committee, I went to a shelter the other day in Detroit. And what struck one immediately was that there were people of means, people definitely not vagrants, Definitely not homeless people. And as much as I think I've seen in my lifetime, to be looking and talking with people who just lost their house, their car, their job, their health insurance, everything. And they're, they're in a shelter being served food. And you say, well, you don't have to be heroic about Africa or Asia. What is happening here is what are you going to do about where you are? And I only wish all of you 
were members of Congress that could enjoy this rare honor of being selected to actually determine what happens, to actually meet with the President of the United States on a more or less irregular basis, uh, who can be invited to somewhere between now and the end of the week will be standing there with the most powerful human being on earth. And so I, I look forward to all 79 of you uh, working with Steve Cohen and myself. Thank you.